<laughs> uh, so I am Jenna Lee, or Jenna Batson, and I am studying environmental and natural resources at Yeah, so I was working in hospitality and the pandemic hit, and so then I was no longer working in hospitality. And I had a lot of time to think and figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I had always kind of had going to school in the back of my mind or going back to school. I studied political science and history in undergrad, naturally went into the fashion industry and then public relations because that's the path that you take, right? Uh, so, but I'd always been doing work that was sort of in the field but just volunteering. Um, so not a lot of time to it. Uh, so I spent the first summer when everything was in lockdown not working, so I had a lot of time. Um, so I was campaigning, and then I was also just calling people that these jobs I thought were really cool, or who I maybe wanted to potentially be when I grew up, uh, and asking them how they got to where they were, showed them the program, asked them if that's something that I would need. The consensus was, yeah, you should probably go back to school if you want to get into the jobs that you want to get into. So decided to apply, did not think that I would get in, and then got in and packed up and drove the two cats out to Colorado, <laughs> so in a, in a Honda Civic two-door, so here we are. <laughs> yeah, so I pivoted from a lot of different career backgrounds. Most recently, I was working in hospitality, I was running a tap room at a brewery and helping on the production side. So coming to a space that people are interested in the same kind of general topics and I don't have to beg somebody to go to a policy meeting or go to a, a restoration cleanup thing has been really nice for me just to have people that have that same interest and that same drive and wanting to really be engaged and try new things and step out of their comfort zone um, I think has been my, my favorite part about being here. It's all been kind of defining <laughs> in its own way. It's it's like I feel as though everything builds on on itself. So you might start something, and then all of a sudden it's turned into something new. Um, that I, I feel like through a lot of my projects or any research I'm doing, when I'm interviewing people that are practicing in the field, and then finding out all those connections, and then moving on and talking to somebody else, that's kind of been this culminative defining moment that you're realizing how small this sector is and how quickly you can get to know people if you take the initiative to, to talk to them and find out what they're doing and not even calling them to ask them for anything personally but just say hey I'm really interested in what you're doing can you tell me about it and then there you want to connect you and then that person wants to connect you so it's just been this kind of waterfall cascading of, of getting to meet new people and getting those like new defining moments every month or so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I wish I did more. Uh, I feel like school takes up a lot of time. Um, I have until recently been volunteering on 350 Colorado's lobby team uh, as a bill captain for them. I work as a judge for this climate innovation challenge program that has K through 12 students submit four minute videos of an environmental solution that they have for a problem geographically specific to them, which was incredibly heartwarming. I think I cry during every video that I watch. Um, so that's kicking up again this year. And then most recently I've started as the legislative intern for Conservation Colorado. So doing a lot of bill tracking, doing a lot of um, legislative letter writing to the senators and representatives to make sure they know our position, to make sure they know the facts uh, on the bills, and then helping with, we're throwing a legislative reception at the end of this month. So really running and putting that together as well. So outside of all of that, uh, I do a lot of yoga <laughs> to keep myself calm. I do a lot of reading. I recently started skiing, which has been terrifying and fun. I only cried once on the mountain last week. Uh, so yeah, just kind of in that downtime, trying to connect more with people outside of class and hanging out with them, going to talks or just playing games, going to the bar, <laughs> just hanging out, trying to be normal. <laughs> Yeah, so before I came here, I was living in Chicago and I worked on the lobby team for Sierra Club there for four or five years. Loved it, loved going to talk to the legislators in Springfield. Came out here, joined 350 Colorado, did the same sort of stuff. So then I was thinking, why don't I just do this for an actual position rather than volunteering um, so that I could have a little bit more substance, a little bit more to do, uh, more consistent. So I started looking for internships. Um, in the Capitol and the, for the U.S. Senators in Colorado as well. 
Conservation Colorado's came up and it just seemed like a good opportunity to meld everything that I enjoy doing together um, and they wanted me so started working with them uh, early January. I came into MNV knowing that I wanted to work in water policy very broadly. It was kind of an abstract idea. So the more that I've been communicating with people, the more research that I've been doing, the more I know I want to work on specifically conservation policies, more in the urban sector that will kind of help bridge that urban rural divide so that it's not, hey, we just need the agricultural section to do things. The urban communities need to do stuff as well. The municipalities need to work on stuff. So. I'm really interested in crafting conservation water policy that considers all angles and all people involved, um, specifically working in the western United States, um, working in the Colorado River Basin states, and eventually maybe being in those rooms that I can help negotiate plans, help compromise, help get people on the, on the same page so that we can collectively work rather than everybody working in silos in different places and doing redundant stuff that might be in conflict with other people. So that's the long-term goal. Still trying to figure out what that bridging step is, but yeah, that's basically what I want to do. <laughs> I think I was really scared coming back to school. Like absolutely terrified. The night before, I was like, what if I just didn't go? What if I just no one, no one would know, I just wouldn't show up. Uh, so I think trying to build that confidence as early as possible and really connecting with people that help build you up is super important. Um, staying authentic to yourself, speaking your mind when you have something to say and listening to what other people have stuff to say is something I, I think is a really important thing to bring to the program and something I've enjoyed being around, hearing other people's points of view hearing where they came from, hearing where their backgrounds are, because we all come in with these different experiences and we're all going in different directions. Um, so I think just kind of working on figuring that out and staying true to yourself the whole time is kind of the, the most important thing I think you can do in this program. <laughs>